What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Triangle Diagnostics. Staying in front of our next victim here, working on a 08 Chevy Trailblazer. Uh, complaint on this one's going to be a check engine light guys and uh, I already looked at fault codes on this. We're dealing with a P0455 EVAP system large leak and uh, you guys are going to hate me but somehow or another the codes got cleared so I'm not going to be able to show you that but uh, we're still going to attack this car. We're still going to figure out where this leak is and uh, you know determine what we need to do to get this thing fixed and back on the road. So for me, I want to go to the scan tool, I want to look at some functional tests, and I want to see if we can run this EVAP test ourselves. And then uh, maybe I can show you guys, based off of fuel tank pressure voltage, uh, the kind of leak that we're dealing with. So let me get you guys hooked up on the scan tool, and uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty guys, so I'm just here in the uh, home screen of the Varus, and I just wanted to show you guys what was going on as far as codes on this. I'm just going to go right here to the codes menu, you're going to click display codes. And as you can see, no codes present. As I said before, the codes were cleared out, but uh, the fault code that we're addressing with this video is a P0455 EVAP system gross leak. So uh, in order to troubleshoot this code, guys, really what I kind of want to get an idea about is what sort of leak we're dealing with. And uh, there's a couple different avenues we can sort of go down to try and determine that. Um, I think for me, the easiest thing to do is just going to be to stay focused on the scan tool. And uh, let's take a look at some of these functional tests here and uh, see if we can determine what sort of leak we have going on that way. So I'm going to start off in this functional test menu. And uh, we have this EVAP service bay functional test here. Um, these tests, the run criteria for them is somewhat, somewhat strict. Uh, engine coolant temperature has to be within a certain range. Fuel level percentage has to be within a certain range. Uh, this truck has been running, so I'm not sure if we still meet the criteria, but we're going to try and execute this test. So I'm just going to click OK on that. As we can see here, it's just kind of a brief description of this test, uh, you know, indicating the fuel level percentage required in order to run it and all that good stuff. We're going to go ahead and click continue. Um, the ignition has been off already for 10 seconds, so we're just going to see if we can skip past this. So for this next step, guys, what it's going to have us do is uh, start this engine up. And basically, it's going to manually run this EVAP test for us. So I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle. All right, vehicle's running now, guys. I'm just going to hit continue. We're crossing our fingers here. That's going to let us do it. Yeah, and you can see we lost enable conditions here. So something, you know, the engine computer doesn't like something. This test is not going to run on this. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to do this test manually. No big deal on that. I'm just going to exit out of this menu. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Output Controls. And uh, General Motors is pretty nice, and they give us this EVAP Purge Seal functional test here in the uh, Vera submenu, so we're going to click that. And what this test is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to both actuate the vent solenoid as well as the purge solenoid in the same menu. So really what we can do is we can manually run this test ourselves. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is I'm going to customize this data list, and I'm going to pull up only what I want to see. And for this test, guys, it's going to be my EVAP vent solenoid state, my duty cycle of my purge solenoid, and I'm also interested in fuel tank pressure voltage as well as uh, inches of water. So these are the four pins we're going to look at. I'm just going to hit OK, and I'm going to graph this tank pressure number here. Um, some initial views before we execute this test, we can see our current tank pressure reading is around 1.5 volts. Something to note on GM is atmospheric pressure on these fuel tank pressure sensors will be around 1.6 volts. Um, all manufacturers kind of have their common ground as far as what atmospheric voltage is. Uh, for example, Ford's generally 2.4 volts is going to be atmospheric pressure on those designs. But uh, for Chevrolet, any Chevy product, 1.6 volts is what you're looking for. So as you can see with this current 1.5 volt number, you know we're currently hovering around atmospheric. Um, if we look at this EVAP purge solenoid duty cycle, it's floating around 16% and the vent solenoid is currently venting, so electronically off, mechanically open. So in order to execute this, desk, this test, guys, really what I'm going to do is I'm going to close the vent solenoid, I'm going to energize the purge solenoid, and I want to see how this tank pressure data parameter responds, and I want to see how far of a vacuum we can actually pull on this tank, and then I'm going to close off the purge valve, leave the canister sealed, and I want to see how long it takes for this vacuum to decay. So to start off, I'm just going to hit this purge, Oh wow, it's, it says it's running the EVAP system test. It's a little strange. Let me 
me exit out of this. I'm gonna try to go back in here, guys. Kick this out. So back into this evap purge seal. Recustomize this data list. And remember, evap purge, spin sole on a command, and then tank pressure. I'm gonna graph tank pressure and bolts. Let's try to run this again. Now nah, it's still kicking us out. Give me one second, guys. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cycle the key off and then back on and uh, see if it'll allow us to run this test. All right, guys, so all I did was I just turned the key off, waited a couple seconds, turned it back on. So we're gonna uh, come back, we're gonna, we're gonna execute this test, and we're gonna, take, we're gonna monitor this tank pressure voltage, and we're gonna see what sort of leak we're dealing with. So to start off, guys, I'm just gonna hit the seal tab here. As we can see, our evap vent solenoid command state changed to not venting. The vent solenoid is currently electrically on, mechanically closed. So at this point, I'm going to hit this purge key here, and I'm just going to start ramping up this purge solenoid. 40% duty cycle should suffice. As you can see, our tank pressure voltage reading is currently climbing. Um, we're holding steady around 1.7 volts now. I'm going to go ahead and kick this duty cycle up to around 70%. You can see we're now kind of hovering around 1.7, 1.8 volts. So not a whole lot of response there, guys. Uh, generally, you know, you'll see these go well over 2.5 volts on a good system. I'm just going to go ahead and ramp it all the way to 100 just to see what happens. So it looks like we're holding right around 1.9 volts there, guys, from our start point of about 1.5. Definitely not a uh, definitely not a big reaction there. So uh, what I'm going to do now, guys, our vent solenoid is currently not venting. It's electronically on. I'm just going to ramp this purge solenoid back down to 0%, and we're going to take a look at how long this tank pressure voltage stays up or near, near this you know, 1.9 volt range. Uh, my suspicions is that it's not going to stay there long at all. Um, I feel we probably have a pretty large leak in the system based off of our current voltage. So I'm just going to start ramping this back down. And you can see with ramping this back down, it immediately drops back down to this, you know, very low voltage number. So taking a look at this tank pressure voltage number here, guys, we're now around this 1.3 volt flat line. Um, that's a little bit strange. That's a little bit out of the ordinary, I'll admit. Um, typically on GM, as I said before, you know, 1.6 volts is around where atmospheric pressure is. So uh, it looks like we potentially have a little bit of pressure in the tank here. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull the fuel cap off of this, and we're going to watch this tank pressure voltage response. So all I did, guys, was I just pulled the fuel cap off just to see what the, our response would be in this tank pressure voltage number. We can see it came up to around 1.5. Um, again, you know, nominal voltage on these is around 1.6 volts, 1.4, 1.5. I'm not super concerned about that, guys. What I am concerned about is the fact that we closed this vent solenoid and we ramped this purge solenoid up, and we were only able to achieve a fuel tank pressure voltage reading of 1.9 volts. Um, that definitely points towards a pretty huge leak in the system. So I think the best next step for us at this point is uh, let's get the hood popped. Let's see if we can identify where the purge solenoid on this vehicle is. And uh, potentially what we're going to do is use that as a test location for a smoke test on this EVAP system. So I'm going to get the hood popped, identify this purge solenoid, and uh, we'll continue on with our testing. All right, guys, so I got the hood popped on this trailblazer here. And uh, I've been looking around for the purge solenoid, and I finally found it. I'm going to try to get you guys a shot of it. If you look way down here... Let me see if I can get you guys zoomed in on that. Kind of sitting underneath the intake manifold on the driver's side of the car. Um, underneath the intake manifold, pretty much mounted right to the side of the engine block. This guy right here is our purge solenoid. And I realize it's going to be pretty tough to show you guys with how far down it is. You can see that red and blue connector coming off of it. But uh, really what I wanted to do is I wanted to use that as my test location for the smoke test. But uh, Given how difficult it is to get down there and get to it, um, I don't think I'm going to use that anymore. Um, I think what we're going to need to do, you know, being that we need to lift this vehicle up regardless to try and identify where this EVAP system leak is, um, I say we lift the car up. Let's take a look at the canister, see if there's any easy hoses we can tap into there, and uh, we'll just execute all of our smoke tests from that location. So let me get this thing up in the air and we'll take a look. All right, guys, we got this vehicle lifted up here now. 
you know what I'm basically doing is I'm just kind of eyeballing this evap system and seeing what we're working with as we can see we got the fuel tank here to the on the driver's side of the vehicle to the left of the uh, drive shaft here uh, if we look right there there's our uh, canister vent solenoid that's gonna be uh, good to know there I'm just kind of looking at where all these hoses go guys and what I'm really trying to do is I'm trying to determine where the best test location is to get a smoke machine in here and uh, I gotta say Chevy's doing this kind of dirty uh, they're not really giving us anywhere easy to hook up to uh, we can look up there and see the filler neck as well as this vent hose coming down but uh, kind of looking through this system guys I think my best bet for getting a smoke machine on this system is this smaller hose right here uh, we can see it kind of to the right of the filler neck where it hooks to the back of the tank uh, let me see if I can just kind of blip it for you. Blip, blip, yep, that one. So I think what I'm going to do, guys, is uh, I'm going to pull this hose out. That hose goes from there to the canister. And uh, I'm going to adapt the smoke machine into that. So let me get this hose out of this, uh, let me get this hose out of this fitting here, get a smoke machine hooked up, and then I'll show you our connections, and then we'll proceed to actually smoke testing the vehicle. So this is the setup, guys. All I did was I disconnected this hose here where it goes in right here and uh, all I did was I just took a little vacuum plug and I shoved it in the end of that to uh, seal it off and uh, I've got this hose running down to the smoke machine here so all we're going to do with this guys is uh, we're just going to smoke test the system and determine where our leak is that way but there's a uh, one very important thing that we need to do first before we can smoke test this system I have the key on vehicles obviously up in the air what we need to do to smoke test this system effectively is we need to energize the vent solenoid which is going to mechanically close it to do that we're just going to use the functional tests in the Varus so I'm back to this functional test menu I'm just going to click this evap vent solenoid I'm going to hit continue on this and what we need to do here guys is we need to turn we need to close this valve so this would be electrically on mechanically closed so I'm just going to hit this close tab here I don't know if you guys have heard that but I did hear a solenoid under the vehicle actuate I'm just going to do this a few times so you guys can hear the click. So hopefully you guys can hear that, but uh, as you can see right here, we are currently not venting. This EVAP vent solenoid should be sealed at this point. So what we're going to do is we're just going to hit on on the smoke machine and we're going to begin doing visual inspections all through this EVAP system and we're going to identify where our leak is, whether it may be up here by the filler neck, you know, maybe the fuel cap or something else. So let me get the smoke machine rolling and I'll get you guys back. Alright guys, so I've got the smoke machine rolling now and I'm just starting towards the front of the vehicle here. Um, I'm kind of focusing on the tank area currently. So really what I'm doing is I'm just looking around this tank. I'm trying to get a good look up top as best as I can. You know, it obviously it has this heat shield here. But I'm just uh, working my way around and I'm just doing a visual for any smoke coming out of here guys. That's all I'm really doing. So I'm just working my way back at this point, taking a look around this filler neck area, kind of around this area that we uh, actually hooked into for this test, getting another look on top of the tank. I'm going to continue working my way back here. The uh, canister on this vehicle is on top of the uh, on top of the rear tire back here, guys. We're looking there too, but uh, I've already found our leak location, guys. If we look up here, uh, we can see this little hole kind of by this filler neck. I mean, smoke is just absolutely dumping out of this area. I'm just going to kind of blow on it a little bit. <sighs> yeah, I mean, smoke is just absolutely dumping out of this area here, guys. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop this vehicle down a little bit, and uh, we're going to get another look at uh, exactly where this is coming from. You can see fuel door is currently closed, but smoke is just billowing out of this thing. So let me drop the car down a little bit and uh, let me get this fuel door open and we'll take a look and see where this smoke is coming from. So I got the fuel door open here guys and we're just taking a look at this, uh, this fuel cap here. And uh, I'm going to kind of blow this away a little bit so maybe we can get a better view. But what I can tell you guys is it's just billowing out of the cap here. And, uh, I've already checked this cap to make sure it's tight and it is, it clicks. And, uh, this, this looks to me like a fairly new cap. Um, it is an aftermarket cap. Not sure about the brand. I'm not sure I should say. But uh, this is a brand new cap, guys. Someone has put this cap on here. I'm not sure if they were attempting to fix this issue. But um, without a doubt, this cap is just absolutely not sealing whatsoever. 
just taking a look around it just to see what in the world may be going on with it. We can see we're billowing out of the actual filler neck here. <sighs> Blow it out of the way and it comes right back, right up the middle. I'm going to throw this back on here. Tighten it down until it clicks. I mean, it's still billowing out of there, guys, without a doubt. You know, this cap is definitely causing this issue. Um, you know, it, it's possible that this fuel cap is not right for this vehicle. I mean, it's definitely a newer cap, without a doubt here. But uh, really what we need to do, guys, we need to put a fuel cap on this vehicle. And then uh, we're going to rerun our EVAP system test and, uh, you know, make sure we don't have any other leaks. And we'll also revisit the smoke test after we get a new cap on here uh, to show that we are no longer leaking. So let me, see, uh, let me see if I can get a cap for this thing. We'll get a new cap on here, and uh, we'll redo some of those tests. All right, guys, so unfortunately, a fuel cap for this vehicle, uh, we won't be able to have one until tomorrow. But uh, I found a willing donor, a willing Chevrolet, just for testing purposes. Um, so this is a cap off of a GM vehicle. It is an OE-style cap. And if we take a look at kind of how this thing's designed, it has this sort of triangular wedge built into it that actually fastens down into the filler neck. If we take a look at the cap we pulled off of here, it's threaded. Uh, completely different style. The O-ring is completely different. If we look at this O-ring, a little tough to see, kind of poor lighting here. But uh, compared to the new one, you know, it's just a big solid O-ring with, of course, this wedge style uh, sort, of, sort of thing going on here. So uh, this is pretty much the wrong cap, guys. And uh, as you can tell, you know, it's a fairly new cap. Um, one, one possible thing that happened was, you know, this vehicle may have had this EVAP leak code and someone put this cap on here in an attempt to fix it. And uh, it just ended up being the wrong cap and that's what's causing this gross leak code now. Um, that being said, there's a possibility there may be other leaks on this system. And uh, this was a engineered problem. You know, this thing maybe originally had a small leak code and then they put this cap on here and now we have a gross leak code. You know, the fuel cap may have not even been the issue to start with. But uh, proof of concept wise, we're going to take this cap here and we're going to go back to the filler neck of the vehicle. As you can see, we're rolling coal pretty good here, guys. I'm just going to fasten this OE style cap back on here and get rid of this smoke. Get you guys some light. So as you can see, big difference. We no longer have smoke rolling out of this thing like a freight train. Uh, we're sealed up nice and tight here on this filler neck now, guys. Uh, you know, just to uh, kind of show that again, I'm going to get the old cap, this wrong style cap. Take our good OE style cap back off. Here's our smoke coming back out. I'm going to fasten this big old hunk of junk back on here. Tighten it until it clicks. And you can see the smoke just pouring out of that. So definitely the wrong cap here, guys. Um, this was definitely a problem that was engineered into this vehicle. But uh, as I said before, we definitely need to be concerned with other leaks in this system. This fuel cap was replaced, I'm sure, in pursuit of you know trying to fix this EVAP system issue. And it's very likely that this may not have even been the original problem. So what we're going to do is, now that we have this nice tight cap on here, we're going to lift this vehicle back up and we're going to do another visual inspection of everything in the EVAP system and make sure we don't have any leaks anywhere else. So let me get this thing back in the air and uh, we'll take another look. All right, guys, so we're going to uh, re-smoke this vehicle at this point. As you can see, our vent solenoid is still closed at this point. It is still energized. So we're just going to go back to the vehicle over here, guys, and I'm going to hit the magic button that uh, pumps this thing up with smoke. Hitting that now. So we got the smoke machine rolling here, guys. I'm just gonna go around and we're going to uh, pretty much redo our visual inspection of this whole system. We'll start up here around the filler neck, kind of where we were before. Just take a look, make sure we don't see anything. And really, we kind of need to give this thing a little bit of time to uh, repressurize the system at this point. But uh, while it's doing that, you know, we'll take a look around, see if we can ident identify anything right off the bat. Um, another good thing to do, guys, you know, while using an EVAP smoke machine is most of them have flow gauges on them. Um, unfortunately, ours does not work, but if your smoke machine is equipped with a flow gauge and, you know, you can look at different orifice size leaks and, you know, you can definitely use that as a gauge to if there are any leaks in the system or not. You know, if you have a flow gauge that is completely bottomed out, you know, and your smoke machine is calibrated down to, let's say, 
five thousandths of an inch orifice, you know, you could definitely just keep an eye on that ball. And, uh, you know, if it drops down to zero, there's really no reason to look for any leak because there is not one. Um, can't really do that with my machine, guys. It's a little bit worn and tired and old. So, uh, can't use that as a guide on ours. But uh, I'm just continuing to look around this vehicle, guys, and I'm just looking for any sign of smoke. Just continuing to make my way around this tank at this point. Again, paying real close attention to the top of the fuel tank. Um, another area we really want to pay attention to is, uh, you know, the vent solenoid. High failure item on GMs, they love to leak. Canisters, also another high failure item on these vehicles, guys. As I said before, this one's kind of tucked up in a pretty, pretty terrible spot up above this wheel. So I'm just trying to kind of look through the spokes of this wheel and make sure I don't see anything leaking out of this canister. I'm definitely not going to pull the wheel out, that's for sure. So I'm just continuing to kind of look around, see if I see anything, guys. And uh, so far, I don't. Taking another closer look at this vent solenoid up here, guys. Definitely don't want to jump the gun on something like this. You know, we definitely want to be certain that we don't have any more leaks in the system. And uh, so far, I'm not seeing you guys. Um, off camera, I'm going to take another look just to make sure we don't have anything. And uh, if I find something, I'll bring you guys back. If not, then we're going to revisit the uh, functional test and the scan tool. And we're going to run that, and we're going to see what a, a proper response to this fuel tank pressure sensor voltage number looks like. So, back in a bit. All right, guys, so off camera, what I did was I just... Uh, Took another hard look at this EVAP system just to make sure I didn't see any more leaks anywhere. You know, I took a real close look at the EVAP vent solenoid and all that good stuff. Uh, didn't see anything else, so really what we're going to do at this point, we're going to revisit the EVAP purge and seal test that we did on the scan tool. And uh, I really just want to show you guys what a good system would look like um, as far as vacuum decay goes into the EVAP system. So I'm going to get you guys focused back on the scan tool, and we're going to rerun that test. And I'm certain that you're going to see a huge difference from where we were before. So, uh, yeah, let me get you guys on the scan tool, and we're going to redo it. All right, guys, I'm just back in the functional test menu. And remember the test that we were in before, EVAP, purge, and seal? So we're just going to go back to this test. We're really just going to repeat what we originally did uh, as far as what we used to get an idea of what sort of leak we were dealing with. We used this test to determine that we had a pretty huge leak in the system. So, again, I'm just going to customize this data list. I'm looking for vent solenoid command, EVAP, purge, valve, duty cycle, and then... Uh, you know, some relevant tank pressure stuff, mainly voltage. Uh, so again, initial views here. Uh, vent solenoid is currently venting. It's not commanded on. It is mechanically open. Our current tank pressure reading is 1.5 volts. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty well there, guys. But uh, key's currently off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start the vehicle up. All right, so the vehicle's running out, guys, and obviously we already replaced that defective fuel cap, or should I say incorrect for application fuel cap. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and redo this test, guys, and you're going to see a pretty obvious difference in what this tank pressure voltage number does. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to seal this system off by energizing the vent solenoid. As you can see, we're currently not venting, electrically on, mechanically closed. I'm going to click this purge key here, and I'm just going to begin ramping this purge solenoid up. 40% should be good for now. We already see a huge difference in this tank pressure voltage number compared to where we were before. Uh, we're already up to three volts. The peak that we reached before was only around 1.9. Take this up. Oh, and it, oh man. So I missed it. Yeah, something to note on these guys, if you ramp this, uh, if you ramp too much vacuum into this system, it'll kick you out of this test in a heartbeat. So uh, we have to redo this. I need to stop it a little bit quicker this time. Just pulling those same same numbers back up as you can see 1.6 volts currently venting I'm just going to seal this system off hit this purge key here as you can see our fuel tank pressure voltage number is climbing I'm going to bring it up to about three and a half volts and I'm going to ramp this purge solenoid down start ramping down now so as you can see current tank pressure reading oh I kicked us out again Hold on, guys. We'll get this right. Go back into the same test one more time. A lot, you know, a lot of running these tests manually is, guys, you really just kind of got to meet the conditions the computer is looking for. You know, if the computer doesn't like something, it's going to kick you out. So you just, 
you sort of have to be patient and you got to keep that in mind and kind of work around the computer's programming. So one more time executing this test, current tank pressure reading 1.5 volts. I'm going to seal the system off and I'm going to start ramping this purge solenoid up. I'm going to try and cut it off a little sooner here. I'm going to cut it off now. Current tank pressure voltage reading, 3 volts. Huge difference from where we were before. Our maximum before number was uh, 1.9 volts, so we can already see that this vehicle is fixed. Um, currently, the system is sealed. The purge solenoid is closed. The vent solenoid is closed. And what we're looking at here, guys, is the rate of decay as far as vacuum goes in this EVAP system. You can see our maximum number. We reached 3, three volts on the tank pressure voltage. Currently at 2.5, this vacuum is slowly bleeding off. All systems will have some sort of decay, guys. It's completely normal. Really what the engine computer is looking at is how fast it takes for this decay to happen. Um, and again, remember on GMs, our atmospheric voltage number around 1.4 to 1.6 volts. But uh, as you can see, huge difference here, guys. And uh, um, as far as this test goes, we're currently holding around 2.3 volts. I'm going to ramp this purse all the way back up again and take this up to about 3 volts. And then what we're going to do is we're going to confirm vent solenoid function using this. So as you can see, currently our tank pressure voltage number around 2.8 volts. So to prove out this vent solenoid and to make sure that it's working correctly, all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the seal key. What that's going to do is initiate a change of state in this EVAP vent solenoid. And what we should see happen to this tank pressure voltage number is it should quickly drop back down to atmospheric voltage, which would be around 1.4 to 1.6 volts on this design. So I'm just going to hit the seal key, and hopefully it'll let us vent. It doesn't seem to, doesn't seem to be letting us do it. Maybe hit the return. Yeah, it's definitely not letting us. Let me just back out of here, maybe, and then I'll go back into it. And what should have happened by doing that, guys, is this vent solenoid should have been de-energized at that point, and uh, we should be able to take another look at this tank pressure, and we can see that it returned to 1.5 volts. So nothing wrong with this vent solenoid, no restriction in the vent circuit or anything like that. Uh, this is a confirmed fix, guys. You know, we, we ran the before and after, and I think it was pretty clear that we definitely fixed this vehicle. But uh, that's it for this one, so uh, let's wrap it up. So that's it for this one, guys. A 2008 Chevy Trailblazer, 4.2 liter engine, P0455, gross EVAP leak fault code. Uh, we covered it pretty quick. Did some really, really basic kind of fundamental EVAP troubleshooting on this thing. I uh, showed you guys how to use bi-directional controls to manually run an EVAP test. Uh, also showed you guys how to smoke test the system. You know, showed you how to energize a vent solenoid via bi-directional commands. There's other ways to do that, guys. You know, in a previous video I had on that Hyundai, we just ended up clamping off the vent solenoid hose. Really, the thing to stress is you really just need to isolate the system in some sort of way, and that usually involves either pinching off the vent solenoid hose uh, for the EVAP system or bi-directionally energizing it, uh, which is what we did here. So I uh, kind of went through it pretty quick, smoke tested it, you know, fairly simple, fairly easy. Found that this thing had an incorrect fuel cap and scald. Uh, went and found another OE Chevrolet fuel cap, stuck it on there, redid our smoke test and confirmed that that did fix the car. And then we re-ran that bi-directional control to uh, kind of show you what a good system would look like as far as uh, peak fuel tank pressure voltage numbers as well as the rate of decay for these EVAP systems. So really pretty much everything we covered here can be applied to just about every vehicle as far as troubleshooting these EVAP fault codes. You know whether you have a PO456 small leak, PO455 large leak like we had here. So uh, definitely some good stuff to take away from this, some good stuff to keep in mind when you're running into these EVAP system problems out in the field. But uh, as for this trailblazer guys, it's all done, it's all fixed, easy peasy, lemon breezy. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. This was another episode of Triangle Diagnostics, and uh, catch you next time.